Six years ago today, I got burned out from work. I didn't know what was going on with me and I considered myself just lazy and a bad worker. And it took me at least one year to understand what is going on and one more year to admit that it's not okay to feel this way. And then with the help of professional, I managed to get out of the burnout. For those of you wondering why I have decided to share this story now, well, it's quite straightforward. Apart from the whole anniversary thing, I actually talk quite often to some of my friends and colleagues and some of them experience the same things. And even I myself still feel like I continue doing some of the small things that led me to feel burnt out. So when I share my story, it resonates with my friends and my colleagues and with myself. So I have decided why not to share it with you as well. I actually remember the final straw, the way it happened. It was right before my vacation. I've been waiting for vacation so long and I've been anticipating it so much. And finally, on the day of a flight, I was just checking something in the system, something work related. And like 20 minutes before taxi, I realized that actually something got messed up and I have to take my laptop with me and I have to fix it and I have to do it. I have to work again on my vacation. And honestly, at this moment, something truly died inside. Like I literally felt something dying inside of me. I cried and I became dead inside. So actually what happened? What led me to feeling burnt out in the first place? Well, to put it straight, it was a lot of work, but it's not like 100% true. It's not like the main reason. Of course, sometimes we all work a lot, but we don't get burnt out that easily. I think the biggest problem was my approach and attitude towards work. Like I ended up working 10 hours every single day, 10 plus hours. And then during weekends as well, I remember there were lots of business trips and how instead of going out and experiencing new cities, I would just sit in my hotel room and work. I stopped seeing my friends. I stopped going out like with anybody <laughs> generally. I didn't have any hobbies at the time. Work was center of my life. But some of the cherries on the top was of course some of the mental things that were going on in the background. I was suffering from people pleasing and a good girl syndrome, definitely. Therefore, I said yes to everything and I was feeling that everybody is expecting so much of me and I'm supposed to do it in perfectionism on the top. Like I'm supposed to do it really, really good. All of it, it doesn't matter. So all of it on my shoulders, I kept it inside. Boss, he wasn't noticing that, um, I don't know, by his choice or whether it is because I haven't told him anything. I don't know, it's my story. So in the end, I was just so overwhelmed and there was just so much work and this final straw that I mentioned, and there, there it goes. I was completely ruined. I was shattered. I was gone, I was dead inside. Some of the symptoms of a burnout that I have experienced. First one is of course feeling tired. And I don't mean just like, you know, simply tired after work or just needed a break. I was waking up already tired and I was feeling tired every second of every single day of every single <laughs> week, you know, all of the time. I was also extremely irritative and generally annoyed by so many things and it was really hard I think to communicate with me at certain levels because I would get irritated like in a second and I might get as well really angry so it was affecting my relationship especially with the close people as you know usually with the close people we just allow ourselves to behave the way we want to without any stoppers so there it goes I was really acting not in the best way possible one other thing that I have experienced is feeling sarcastic and it means that before I used to be like okay I want to achieve something, I was feeling enthusiastic and excited about some things and now I was just acting really, really sarcastic. I wanted people to fail, company to fail, I was making the jokes all of the time and of course I became really pessimistic, I was always hoping for the worst and actually I was hoping the company will crash and I will just get fired and I'd be free from all of that and none of it will matter anymore to me or to anybody else and I was I remember I was also very excited about people leaving and starting new jobs hoping that somehow the fact that people go to different companies will make this one 
appear in quite a problematic state. So as I mentioned, it took me years to figure this out and to start my journey to becoming more balanced and reconnecting with myself and with my work-related part. And yes, I have communicated with the specialist, with the therapist. So of course, disclaimer, if you are experiencing some of the things, none of the things that I mentioned here is a direct advice. Of course, this is just my story and my experience. So if you really feel super burnt out or anything that I say in this video just resonates with you, please consider talking to a specialist. So anyways, one of the things that happened was actually me switching jobs. It was in the same company, but I managed to get a position in a different department. And that actually allowed me to feel a bit renewed, to feel a bit of this new flow and new energy. And of course, I have stopped doing two things at a time. I have now only one focus, one thing that I should do. So the cause of the problem from this perspective was gone and I had time to actually reflect and think about myself and do things for myself. So here are some of the things that I did. First, of course, work-life balance. From that time, from like, what, four years till now, work-life balance has been number one priority for me. It doesn't mean that I don't care at all about work. No, not like this. But that means that my private life always comes first. Like the fact that I only work in the given hours contributes to that. The fact that always after work, I go out and feel the shift from the work environment into my personal life contributes to that. The fact that in the mornings I have routine and nice things, slow things that I do just for myself, not starting to work immediately, contributes to that as well. Next thing is, of course, allowing myself to rest. And for me, it wasn't like taking the long vacation. I couldn't take sabbatical or whatever because I need money, I need something to eat and somehow to survive. So allowing myself to rest included first not working on the weekend, which was already a big achievement for me. Allowing myself to simply do nothing and not feeling bad about it, not feeling that I just, you know, I'm a lazy again and I'm just somebody who is not contributing to anything. So I have taught myself, I've learned what it is to rest and again to do nothing. Very, very important thing is allowing yourself to have some fun and I know it sounds a bit weird and ridiculous, but having fun is so important. First off, because you feel so numb when you burn out, you, you generally might not even be able to have fun. So I was artificially putting myself in the environments where I was having fun. Would it be like some activities, some, uh, I don't know, dancing, going out, experiencing new things, um, whatever anything all of it just please have some fun allow yourself rest and fun that of course means that i have embraced hobbies back into my life and in at least in the beginning i was doing so much i think i went to the vocal lessons i started to play ukulele i was braiding something with my hands i was experiencing and you know touching some of the things that i can potentially do when it comes to sports when it comes to like regular activities so i was embracing all of it and doing it all in my free time and i think it contributed so much of course i have started to listen to myself way better and be more attentive to myself that means that people pleasing i have worked a lot on it it went into the past as well as good girl syndrome i rediscovered myself from that perspective i and not by being annoyed irritated sarcastic person all of the time, but I have reinvented myself as someone who can stand for myself, who knows my boundaries, my capabilities, my resources, and who most importantly values that and expect other people to value them as well. And the same goes to actually other people. I think I value their resources way more right now. Something that made a big contribution was allowing myself to talk, meaning that I was talking to my new boss and sharing all of my, not like, you know, deep emotions, like the thing that you only share with your diary, not like that, but I was sharing this bad feelings and my like pessimistic anticipations if I had some, if I didn't understand something, if I felt like my resources being super limited and I just cannot do something, I was 
I was talking about that and this is obvious but for someone like me back like seven years ago this was literally impossible because I would feel like I would be considered a bad employee if I would do that not anymore and plus again you have to be able to put it in a quite nice form understandable and not go into deep emotions but instead like discuss the problem and the same goes out to your friends and colleagues i used to be ashamed of feeling burned out but now i don't anymore feel ashamed of experiencing any sort of emotions and what's more i know that some of my colleagues can support me and can help me with that and the last but probably the most important one is taking responsibility for my happiness and for my life and this is super important and crucial in any part of your life but I remember before being burned out and even at the earliest stages I was expecting just someone to notice someone to feel sorry for me someone to do something for me even when I went to therapy I was expecting the therapist to fix everything like this but well obviously i'm not like two anymore i have a brain and i have experience now and of course i know that yes all of the responsibility is here on that shoulders and it's up to me if i want to feel good i gotta do everything i can to feel good if i feel bad i need to figure out what is going on and just fix it so i'm no longer expecting like magical things to happen and I, of course, take responsibility for my life and for my work life. And well, and it's actually a big part of all of the things that I do to avoid burnout. I think that burning out is, well, it's quite common today. And I really don't want it to become the new norm. Because honestly, feeling burnout was one of the worst things that I have ever experienced, especially because of being really numb but also at the same time irritated and quite angry and i did my best to avoid burning out hoping that it will never ever happen to me and all of the things that i mentioned above i still have all of them in my life having fun having hobbies work-life balance number one and just enjoying myself and allowing myself to have rest and to just do whatever I want. Yes, I might not be like career goals. Maybe this burnout out affected me in a sense that I actually don't want to develop a career or something like that, because I honestly want to focus more on myself, on the things that makes me feel good. It doesn't mean that I avoid like work-related responsibility. I just do it at my own pace and I don't rush myself. And on top of this, I don't care if anybody thinks that I'm just being like really slow and anything similar to that. So that's it, that's my story. I'm really hoping that it can help someone. And even if not, it just feels good to get it off my chest. And I thank you very much for watching this. And as usual, guys, I wish you to have the most beautiful, precious and amazing day. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.